Hello everyone. Let me start by thanking ASM for providing me this opportunity to present about my research on corrosion control in molten fluoride salts. I am Krishnamurthy Shankar and I am a graduate student in the Corrosion and Materials Chemistry Research Laboratory at Georgia Institute of Technology. This presentation focuses on the control of corrosion of a stainless steel and a nickel based alloy in molten fluoride salt by a chemical redox control method. To start with, did you know that nuclear energy is one of the cleanest and most efficient forms of energy and produces less emissions per energy generated than even solar energy? So why do we not use this source of very clean energy to provide energy for the entire world and not just for some spots? That's why. Accidents such as Chernobyl and Fukushima have scared the public and governments away from this incredibly clean source of energy and with good reason. But there's a solution for that. FHRs or fluoride cooled high temperature reactors are fourth generation nuclear reactors that use molten fluoride salts as coolants instead of water. They operate at much higher temperatures and much lower pressures than traditional water cooled reactors, which should prevent incidents like Fukushima from occurring. They are safer and have potential to be one of the cleanest and most efficient sources of energy for the world. I mentioned that they use molten fluoride salts as coolant and a candidate coolant for FHRs is Flynac, which is the eutectic mixture of lithium fluoride, sodium fluoride and potassium fluoride. It has a comparatively low melting point at 450 degrees Celsius and has great heat transfer properties. This work was also done using the Flynac salt. However, one of the major issues of employing these FHRs is that the fluoride salts are extremely corrosive to structural materials. Now, corrosion usually occurs when there is a favorable formation energy for the formation of corrosion products. But for fluoride salts like Flynac, as you can see from the Gibbs free energy diagram here, the salt components form, form more stable fluorides than the alloying elements. So this would ideally prevent corrosion. But corrosion still happens because impurities like moisture and HF can, uh, can change the redox potential of the salt and makes corrosion reactions thermodynamically feasible. So if we can eliminate impurities or control redox potential of the salt, we can eliminate corrosion. And one method for controlling these impurities would be to add a metal with high tendency to react with impurities. For example, lithium has a high tendency to react with impurities and neutralizes them, which would prevent the corrosion of alloys due to these impurities. Sodium and potassium would also work for this purpose, but lithium is much more economical and easier to handle and use. And the objective of this work plainly is to study the control of corrosion of a nickel-based alloy and an austenitic stainless steel by the method of salt redox control through addition of varying amounts of lithium metal. For our experiment, we are testing one nickel alloy, which is Haslo N and one austenitic stainless steel 316H and their nominal compositions as measured by XRF is given in this table. These are exposed to molten flynac salt inside a nickel crucible for 100 hours at 700 degrees Celsius. In some of these crucibles, we are adding lithium in varying amounts to see how effective it is in redox control. And the entire test is carried out inside a glow box with controlled atmosphere. The depth of corrosion due to these exposure tests can be obtained by cross-sectioning the samples and performing scanning electron microscopy on the cross-section. So in this SEM micrographs, Haslo N in the top and 316H in the bottom, the samples here we are exposed to Flynac without any addition of lithium. We can see that in both these alloys, there is significant corrosion after exposure to Flynac salt without any lithium for 100 hours. The attack in the salt is above 60 microns in both alloys, which at 100 hours is catastrophic. But when 0.028% lithium is asked, added, we can see that the attack goes down to 10 to 15 microns in both of these samples. A small, even the very small addition of lithium has reduced this corrosion drastically. Now, these samples were exposed to Flynac with 0.28% lithium, that is around 1.2 mole percent lithium. And we can see here that the corrosion is completely eradicated. This indicates that for the type and amount of impurities in our salt, 0.28% lithium is sufficient to achieve complete redox control and corrosion prevention. Now, just to check for any potential negative effects of lithium, we also tested with 2% alloy. And we can see here that these samples look identical which means that there is no detrimental effects like the formation of new corrosion products with the addition of excess lithium. So lithium is, can be a safe uh, to, uh, corrosion control agent for structural materials in molten flynac salt. So to conclude, we saw that the corrosion in molten flynac salt is driven by impurities, that the addition of metallic lithium to the flynac salt can reduce the corrosion of these uh, alloys Hasloy N and 316H in this salt, and that the exact amount of lithium required for this would depend on the type and quantity of impurities in the salt. If we can solve this issue, MSRs can provide clean energy without contributing to global warming to the entire world. This work was funded by the funding from the Department of Energy, NEUP program. 
and it was funded by, and i would also like to thank my advisor dr preet singh for all his guidance during this work if anyone is curious to know more here is a link for our recently published paper and you can also contact me in my email id for more details thank you